Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this beautiful planet. This is Rebecca Jernigan coming to you live from the heart of America to around the globe via the World Wide Web, journeying into the realms of the known and the unknown. You're listening and watching Journeys with Rebecca right here on Project Camelot TV Network. Hi everyone and a good day to you all. First, before I get Shelly and Tina on the show with this, I want to extend my warmest good wishes for a wonderful holiday time with friends and family. And of course, I wish each and every one of you and us a peaceful and prosperous new year. Shelly is going to be talking about the astrological influences for Christmas Day and beyond. And of course, she'll probably start with today's information. And certainly what we can expect and how everything kind of lines up for the rest of the year into 2016. We do have Shelley scheduled to come back in January, mid-January, uh, for another astrological update. So hopefully she can bring us the information of the uh, very interesting energies that are lining up and that will carry us through until her next visit to the show right here on Journeys with Rebecca. Now, for today, if you do have uh, any questions that would be general questions to ask of Shelley today, you can type those in the chat room, in the chat box there. Make sure you put them all in capital letters. Um, we're not, we are going to request respectfully that you do not put in your birth date and specific information uh, because that would require Shelley to pull up charts and do all of that. And that's not what this particular show is going to be about and the information that she'll be sharing with us. Uh, but if you do have questions about the energetics and how everything is lined up, astrologically speaking, do put those questions in there. Um, and then Brian, my wonderful producer, will be posting those here and I can answer, ask those questions and Shelley can answer them on air for us. Now, uh, again, I want to welcome each and every one of you and I truly hope uh, that you all have a wonderful holiday season. Uh, I will be sharing a little bit more information at the end of the show about the upcoming shows uh, through the end of this year and the beginning of next year. So without further ado, let's get Shelly on. <laughs> Hello, Shelly. Hi, my Hi dear. Hi there. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, you know, we, as in me and the frogs in my pocket, are doing um, <laughs> okay today. Um, <laughs> Very been a very strange last few days, and I'm sure you're going to enlighten us as to why that might be, Shelley. And I'm glad you're here with us. Well, thank you. Um, we're coming to the end of the year. We're coming to a nice big full moon on Christmas Day. Um, I think you know right now we're under very good aspects. By the way, um, you said I was going to speak about today. It was really bumpy yesterday evening and this morning um, moon and Gemini the mutable signs now have difficult aspects right away when the moon goes into a mutable sign it has to meet up with Neptune and Saturn first and that was probably making things a little difficult for us till about three o'clock in the eastern time zone I, I generally speak in eastern time because that's where I live so uh, you'll have to convert to your own time if you want to figure out what I'm saying. Um, wait a minute, that's not, you know. So, um, and now we have the moon in this air sign, Gemini, so we can communicate well and travel well. I mean, that could have been a problem earlier today if you were one of the people who had to travel for the holiday. Uh, you could have had delays earlier in the morning and last night it would have been probably water related like rain or fog and stuff like that but um, now you have a trine to the planet Uranus and, a, and that is just Gemini loves that that is why we're talking about astrology today because Uranus rules that it's an energy field of study uh, that's really what it is we're looking at the interactions of elements and what kind of energy they produce all right so right now the mind is active and open and totally ready to receive new impulses 
Um, as we go through the week, um, the most notable things to talk about, I think, are the approach to Christmas Day because of this, you know, everybody gets very excited. You know, if you're on Facebook now, everything is special, as I've mentioned before. It's, it's special. There's a full moon on Christmas Day. It won't happen again for 19 years, you know. Um, full moons happen every 28 point something days. And if you have one on a holiday, it's going to do a full moon type of a holiday, which means that all the energies are going to get bigger. <laughs> Emotional energies will be bigger because that's what happens with the full moon. It brings up things for us. And we can have fruitions. They can be wonderful things. Or they can be the thing that was coming to a head <laughs> that you've been trying not to face or something like that. That also happens. Um, the light, the big light of the moon is shining down, you know. So it can either be like the way the old movies about, you know, cops and robbers and stuff, and they used to sit them under this big spotlight, you know, like that would make them tell the truth. Well, yeah, you notice the shows don't do that anymore, right? They forget it, you know, forget that light thing. But, uh, but that was a symbolic thing and it happens for us when there's greater light shining it's possible we might see something <laughs> or we might have to see something that was obscured right so if this is happening on the holiday which it is and um, there is a chart there's always a chart drawn and on my astrolessons.com website, on my Facebook page, and in the e-newsletters, I'm always giving you information about the full and the new moons because these are the important monthly waxing and waning and the, the, flow, the flow times for us. So in this uh, full moon coming on Christmas Day, it actually happens. You're going to feel it more building up on Christmas Eve. If you're living in the UK, on the other side of the pond, you will have it on Christmas morning because when this actually takes place is 6.11 a.m. in the Eastern time zone. So by the time some of us wake up in the United States, that full moon is over. So this buildup, there's a buildup of energy now. And so in years where there's a new moon, which is the, the lowering of energy, maybe it doesn't feel quite as stressed or maybe it doesn't seem as emotional or whatever but this year there is a lot of action and a lot of emotion and I mean it's not <laughs> I was thinking about this earlier today things don't happen in a void all by themselves you know we have a Christmas holiday but we also have a lot of other things going on in this country and the full moon is in the sign of Cancer because the Sun is in Capricorn and Cancer is a sign that's very concerned with security emotional security and the home and it is a sign also of countries so if you look out there <laughs> you don't even have to be thinking about your own personal family or your own life you can see that we've been having this enormous buildup of energy about security and what people are doing with it. This is the most important thing because if we have no objective awareness and under a full moon it's, it's harder if it's in a sign like Cancer because Cancer is a water sign that's about feeling. Cancer is feelings to the max. You know, cancer, I like to tell my students when I'm teaching, it's, it's like, you know, personalizing everything, um, including the weather. You know, like when um, in Funny Girl there's a song about raining on my parade, you know, and Barbara Streisand belts this song out. Um, cancers believe that it's raining on their parade, you know, it's not like, <laughs> it's, not like it's just raining. So. Cancer full moon, this is this is the thing. This is big energy of is it all about me? You know, um, and am I secure? So it's 
probably a good thing that the peak is going to be over so early because when people get together with their families there's a lot of unfinished emotional business you know there are some families that seem very very lucky they seem to be able to feel very secure around each other and other families that have exactly the opposite feeling when they get together so the families that feel happy and loving and full of warmth for each other are going to feel that enormously um, with this full moon coming in especially again on Christmas Eve and then the families that have trouble um, there's going to be it, basically just look at it as fear All right. so if you're the one who's listening to this you're the one <laughs> you are now responsible for um, keeping the lid on <laughs> <laughs> or as I said in one of my forecasts that I posted on I have an Astro Lessons Facebook page that I post daily forecasts on um, you'll be the one that you know if the pot looks like it's gonna boil over you're the one that has to pick it up and take it off the stove you know or turn down the heat because that's literally what we're talking about now and fear is a very active heat boiling <laughs> energy and it really usually doesn't have a lot of basis in reality. What do they say? False evidence appearing real. You know, I'm sitting in a house now. Um, my roof is keeping the rain away from me. Um, I'm fine. You know, that's what uh, people like Eckhart Tolle or The Power of Now, they're trying to get us to come back into the moment and, f and listen to our our heartbeat or feel our breathing just so that we understand, you know, we're okay. I'm okay right now. So if you can focus on how everything's okay, then you'll have a better day. And one of the great things about this full moon, I think it's a really great full moon if you're understanding that this is a polarity between the emotional need, which is the moon shows us what the emotional need is, to feel secure in home and family, and the opposite sun drive in Capricorn which is the individuals need to establish the self in public life and career this is a bit at odds you know with our uh, tradition you know you might it, in a way you could see this now you know there might be somebody at your gathering who can't get off their device because they have to keep checking something <laughs> <laughs> I think we all yeah. know somebody like that you know, I mean, it's life or death, you know, it's their public life, you know. People will be tweeting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, but how about spending a little time with the family and being together and feeling the bonds? This is what the Cancer Moon wants, you see. So this is where some of the discordant energies can come up on Christmas Day because this is an emotional need. And when we're an emotional need, we're not very objective. And so we can have problems, but the good news is that there's a lot of earth energy. There was on the winter solstice chart too, and there was a forecast posted for the winter solstice, but you can find that on the Facebook page and, and on the astrolessons.com forecast news page. Because we have Mercury, we have Pluto in Capricorn, that's earth. Um, on the winter solstice we had the moon in Taurus which is as earthy as it can get um, this is a, a guideline for the three months ahead and then of course we have Jupiter in Virgo right now and that's earth so the earth energies are balancing us and keeping us more stable yeah and as we move into the new year also we're going to have this emphasis on earth and the in the first month or so which is going to help us come come down to earth and deal with the things that have to be dealt with just in the mundane and practical aspects of life so I mean I think that's that can be very helpful when you're going through this this day of Christmas and um, you know I've talked on the show if you haven't there's a show that we did uh, where I talked a lot about the new evolutionary nodes that are in south node Pisces and north node in Virgo so this Virgo energy is an earth sign and it's asking us to be discerning and to look at our habits and you know that's one of the things you can look at 
during a Christmas day. Somebody posted on Facebook something about if if you're not eating and drinking yourself to the point of diabetes, is it really Christmas? You know, and it's a joke, it's a laugh, it's a ha ha ha. But our North Node is saying to us, how about looking at this? How about choosing wisely instead of just letting yourself get carried away and then be a victim um, of what you're feeling? So this is something that is in our in our realm now also. And this full moon is very close to the nodes. It's not in the degree, it's not in the sign that it should be in. Um, it's not mutable. We're in cardinal signs for the full moon. But what this moon being so close to it is, it's telling us is that these are these attributes, Cancer and Capricorn, the need for security, the need really within the individual to develop emotional self-sufficiency. This is a big, big deal. You know, are you really buffeted about by the things that happen? You know, must we react with fear? Or if we do react with fear, because that's kind of natural, must we stay with it? You know, should we, you know, it's either like, do we let it come and go or do we make that our home. We just live in that fear. So this is a very important thing for us to look at as well as the Capricorn need to be respected and have status at the expense of, you know, the feeling nature. Um, the, the Capricorn energy has been known to um, the end, say they say this about it, the end justifies the means, you know, and so is that really true though? You know, do we really feel that way when we do something we really shouldn't do in order to get something that we think we wanted? Do we do we feel good? Does it not matter? You know, the collateral damage, does that not matter really? So these are things because this full moon is so close to the evolutionary node, which is asking us for discernment. Um, these are the things that we have to review during this full moon and not play victim or perpetrator in holiday disagreement, you know, not having illusions and being deceptive or using escapist behavior, like <laughs> think about a few that you could use, you know, and even just being on a device is escapist behavior, right? So instead paying attention to the habits and methods that are best for your own health, other people's health and well-being, and just simply smooth functioning appropriate functioning, how things will work. And we have a wonderful tri a trine, really, from Neptune to the moon. And it sextiles the sun in Capricorn. And Neptune, when it's positive, can bring in all the intuitive guidance and spiritual realization and inspiration that we need. It can bring in compassion. Yeah. So it can lift us up. And uh, one of the things that helps us do that is music, you know, and um, so listen to what you're listening to and see if that's something that's helping your environment. Um, Uranus in Aries right now is at a station because this is the other big thing about Christmas Day. Uranus in Aries stations direct. So it will be going direct later in the evening. And so what this does now is the, okay, the retrograde planets are all about going within. So when they move forward, it comes out into the world. So this is the time when any of the changes or the revolutionary ideas or, you know, the, the volatility that might be inherent in a situation can start to manifest. It can be good change or it can be difficult depending on wh what you find yourself in and what you find yourself with. And it's still somewhat squaring Pluto. These things are going to be moving away. We're going to get further and further away from those seven exact Pluto-Uranus squares that we've gone through. Um, this is going to make our changes possibly come easier for us. and we do still have, um, with Mars and Libra, Uranus go is going to do the uh, opposition to Mars at some point soon. That is 
also super volatile also for relationships so one of the things we have to look at and we had the big moon that dealt with relationships the Aries full moon um, that was the big super moon that everybody was all excited about we're still in that influence are there cracks in the relationship energy are there really significant disagreements or diff differing viewpoints are they things that can be bridged um, are they things that can be patched or not you know this is a time when we may need to see that it's it's the end of a year we're starting to set our intentions for a new year our intentions can be also to start seeing more uh, of what really needs to be what really needs to be done you know um, not feeling victimized by it necessarily but feeling like okay this is the these are the steps you know tuning in to get that information and taking your healthy steps and letting others take theirs you know we, we might be the ones that are holding other people back from taking steps that they need to take so um, this can happen too so this is a time this is a moment and even though this is the holiday um, this full moon is there to bring this up to put that light on it so that you can see all right now in the background Venus is in Scorpio and it's making a sextal to Jupiter in Virgo which should help some of the energies be upbeat um, and even some of the ability to be a little bit more aware of other people's needs and not just our own um, it could provoke some overdoing and it could provoke some overspending but there is that practical side of Virgo that Jupiter is bringing in and Mercury is still in Capricorn so you might be being wiser than you <laughs> thought you may be um, at this particular time I don't know I haven't been watching the news to see how the shops are record you know reporting their sales and you know with all the Capricorn energy around though uh, people could have been more inclined to get the big ticket you know the uh, status items right now they would be more inclined to that too so I'm not sure but you know it could be that that happened for you <laughs> so if it did um, you'll be dealing with the bills as they come in <laughs> right? and then you'll go wait a minute you know maybe I should be more discerning about um, gifts for others so did you want to say anything at this point? You know, I do. Uh, there's a couple of things. You you really spoke a lot about uh, the Christmas Eve energy coming forward and then bringing in the Christmas Day energy. Um, and then obviously, the I, th well, I got an amusement out of the Facebook post, but with what you was talking about is about eating yourself sick and drinking yourself sick kind of a thing. And... You know, I have to tell you, is through the years, Shelly, I grew up with traditions. We all did in some manner, whether it be Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever. Mm -hmm. And through the years, I have certainly changed those traditions. And it really was uh, my children when they were young, young, that turned me on to looking at the holidays through different eyes. It was it was quite an amazing thing. They were just little guys. And... Uh, Hmm. Uh, I, I got looking at that I was like well you, you know what just because we've always done it that way and my mother did it that way maybe her mother did it that way doesn't mean that I need to do it that way this is my family and this is what they want so we're gonna do it this way and so every year I would change it up um, hmm. always change it up so it wasn't like for every Thanksgiving we necessarily had turkey or for every hmm. Christmas we had ham and then you know all of that I mean it was whatever we decided on as a group in those years. Well, what do you want this year? Well, how are we going to do this? And it was it was actually quite lovely. And I can tell you through the years, we don't sit and just we never just sat and gorged and gorged and gorged and really literally made ourselves sick. We would munch all day long, but we didn't. You know what I mean? It was just kind of festive. 
but it really I, I do ask for people to do the same thing I mean this is what you're saying and that it's just you know use some discernment just because it's there doesn't mean you have to eat it nor should you push it on somebody else and and uh, I think that would help people a lot there's a lot of expectations about what needs to be served how it needs to be served we become slaves to tradition and we really need to look at those traditions to see if they really work for us anymore because right. we all change you know whether you're a young parent an older parent uh, whether you're not a parent at all whether you have groups of friends or family that you uh, hang out with we're, we've all changed and so with that comes new ideas how do we bring forth a healthier idea and I don't necessarily mean that you have to watch every little thing but it's using that common sense as well bringing in a balance um, there seems to be a, a lot of balancing energies if people can grab a hold of them during mm -hmm. these those few days and and uh, I'm hoping that everybody is listening <laughs> and really try to grab a hold of that and you're absolutely right about the light shining down and if the family unit has its issues it's going to those issues can can raise their ugly head uh, in a negative way or you can be the one that reroutes it and puts it in a different light or a different context or wait to even approach it from a different time frame if it's even needed mm -hmm. so there's a lot of real positive things about this extremely interesting uh, full moon coming up here and my understanding is is that we haven't had a full moon on uh, Christmas for what 30 years or 40 years or something it's been a very very long time it's really it's the cycle of the of the lunar cycle and when it's gonna be exactly I mean it almost isn't on Christmas Day in the right. Eastern time so you know it's it it's uh, just six hours into Christmas Day so that is it that means that it could have been in the weeks coming in, in to Christmas or it could have been in the days after Christmas it isn't like there wasn't one anywhere near it and people's energies were going to you know <laughs> if it if it was a total new moon cycle if you were in the dark moon that's also just a cycle see I just have um, I want to tell you that when I'm looking into January and moving into the into the next year there are going to be two solar eclipses and two full moon lunar eclipses and the first one is going to be the first of six super moons so people hear the super moon and they say well wow <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and yeah I mean wow is because we have a natural process um, of the moon in its orbit with the sun getting closer to the earth moon the orbits are sort of more elliptical than they are circular so at certain times the planet is closer to us or the moon is closer to us so for six moon cycles the moon is going to be closer to earth so it's a little bit bigger when we look at it um, and the energy the the pull <laughs> is stronger so yes they are super moons but they happen every year I mean I wish people would just understand that I have the desire can you tell for people <laughs> to understand this because this is our natural experience of life this is if we know how the cycles are going then we can follow and we can be in harmony with it don't put yourself away from it by making it you know something that's like <gasps> you know <laughs> it isn't like you know it's not like that do you, do you remember when they kept it started on email but every year they kept sending around this thing that Mars was going to be as close as the moon to us and that wasn't going to happen for you know and if Mars had ever gotten that close to the earth we wouldn't be here exactly okay. So that was just somebody playing on us and our lack of connection to what's real. So I kind of like to bring things down into what's real. <laughs> right. 
And, you know, there will be full moons, if not on the exact day of Christmas, there will be full moons near it. <laughs> Right. Um, you will have your full moon every 28 point something days. So it's not, you know, let's just look at what it's telling us now. You know, you know, we had a conversation before the show started and I, I just feel mm -hmm. the need that I wanted to share this with you that I didn't share with you when we were talking off off the air. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, talking about keeping it real and one of the things to keep it real is to, and I, I've talked about this for years, is about the natural rhythms mm -hmm. that occur on this planet. And that's why for me, listening to an astrologer takes that conceptual and, and sensory thing that I have going on and putting it into a formula, so to speak, or a format as to what these natural occurrences are and why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling about something or experiencing something um, is because of this natural flow that we go through every cycle of the 28 point whatever days from one full moon to the next or one new moon to the next or whatever the case may be right. and that's why I think equinoxes and solstices are extremely important um, because oh. the representation of what they actually stand for has been lost on modern um, modern time, shall we say, through um, a, a lot of the societies, not necessarily all of them, but a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I think if people would study these, the natural phenomenon of these things, what they really stand for, um, I think people would be able to get that sensory perception going mm -hmm. that would help them to put into context the information that you're sharing and that astrologers share. Well, I I would have to agree with you. Um, I don't know if I'm I, I think I just came back on and I'm saying that I I definitely agree with you. And um, I was thinking today also about Saturn being in Sagittarius and that Saturn is a teacher, a karmic teacher, and it's making us look at some of our beliefs, all of our beliefs. I mean, all we do, we are like belief machines, you know, that's how we function here. They tell us what's right, what's so, and we experience, you know, like if I if I do something I fall down you know or I you know we we experience um, things and then we believe you know we believe it so um, another thing other than just looking at rigid beliefs that are holding us back which is a big thing with Saturn in Sagittarius is I was thinking about how it, it is also wisdom in the indigenous cultures because Saturn is the teacher, it is wisdom, and the indigenous cultures were all operating on the on the plotting and the observing and the understanding of these cycles. That's what they were doing. So, it, it it is time for that to come back in, especially as we're you know in this evolutionary brink point here, where in a very short time on the planet we've managed after the industrial revolution to you know be kind of putting our own existence in in jeopardy because that's because we haven't been honoring you know the reality of these cycles and what they mean so I agree I agree with that um, I want everyone to kind of sit with that. I hope I hope people sit back and listen to this portion of it again um, and see how that resonates with them. So as we're looking past the Christmas time frame and we're getting into the new year, let's take a look, if you don't mind, uh, literally at the last day of this year, moving into yes. January 1, the calendar year. Right. And um, because a lot will transpire between Christmas and New Year. Uh, New Year's Eve uh, for many people and so if you could share with us that what people can look look kind of towards 
in that time space. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'd, be ha I'd be happy to do that. Uh, one of the things that's happening is that Venus is going to leave Scorpio where she can be hmm, a little bit manipulative, a little obsessed, you know, perhaps jealous. <laughs> Again, I, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know. um, but she's also a good healer if she's elevating and she's looking at her heart energy. This is where we can learn to heal with love. So we're coming to the end of that transit and on the 30th of December at 2.16 in the morning Eastern, she goes into that happy-go-lucky Sag sign. So we kind of come up a bit from some of the intensity and we want to play we want to that's what we want to do when Venus is in Sag she wants to play so um, when we get to the day of New Year's Eve now we have the moon is in Virgo so we're in the earth sign that we were just talking so much about for the end of the year is this a coincidence I don't know <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. But when the moon is going through a sign, by the way, we're all experiencing it, even if it's not our natal moon. We're all experiencing the quality of having an emotional need that is in that sign. So we have the emotional need in Virgo to be taking care of things, and we want perfection, and that's where we can get a little off the beam. But we find that as we go into New Year's Eve day, it's, another, it's a fabulous day. It's one of the most unusually good New Year's Eve days <laughs> that I've seen in a while. But it is earthy. It's, it's, um, first we get the conjunction to Jupiter earlier in the day, 11.50 a.m. That's a great time to sit down if you can, if you're not working, most people, well, most people work on New Year's Eve. You can sit down and start looking at your planning, your practical planning for the next year. You know, what is it that you want to see manifesting in the very real practical way? Not in your emotional life so much, but in terms of your health, in terms of your work situation, the things that you need to do around your house to make things run smoothly, organize. Oh, this is my word. Or <laughs> <laughs> so can I just hire somebody? <laughs> you why not? <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I knew somebody. I, I need somebody. Um, the moon then goes into a trine to Mercury and Capricorn for the rest of the day and the rest of the evening. And again, this is not frivolous. It's not like having a Leo, yay, you know, or an Aquarian, whoopee. You know, it's not, it's not that energy for that night. But it is a very stabilizing and helpful energy. Um, again to be thinking about what you want to see and even in the outer world not in our own personal world because Capricorn is that public like you were talking about traditions and consensus and how we always do that's Capricorn and government you know and the way things are being run in the outer world this is Mercury and Capricorn so in the morning we can be looking more at our own world and in the evening we can be looking if you're you know if you're not going out and partying if you do the burning bowls that some people do on a new year's eve that you you write down all the things you want to get rid of and you burn that and you've got your list of all the things you want to bring in as we're in this evening cycle now we can be looking at the things we want to see in the world you know how we might um, readjust like you did with your holidays, um, how we might readjust for a better result. Now Mercury is getting, he's sl slowing down a little, because <laughs> guess what, Mercury is going to do it right away in January. <laughs> Mercury is going to retrograde, everybody loves that so much. And it always, it always seems like Mercury is retrograde anyway, doesn't it? It does. But, it's crazy, but on New Year's Day, 
Mercury is entering Aquarius. That's where it's going to retrograde. So these last moments of this practical energy going direct are good to use on, on the New Year's Eve day. The moon will be in Libra for New Year's Day, and that's actually as we're coming um, into the lowering of light phase. So during that day, we'll get the moon square sun, which brings us to the point where we are naturally, every month, looking at what I need to let go of and give up and how I need to rearrange or what bills have I not paid, what do I have to complete. You know, so this is what could be on your mind as as we go into the first couple of days of of the new year of January. Um, new Year's Day. Uh, I mean, it begins if you happen to get up early enough, uh, or you're or you're in the UK. It's a it's a moon in Libra that comes in at 1:41 a.m. Eastern, and sextiles Venus in Sag. So it's a beautiful energy for a breakfast if you're up early enough on the Eastern time um, but over across the across the ocean definitely a great morning to have friends in for you know a hangover breakfast or something <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know as the day goes on you've got you've got the moon square Sun and that's what makes the um, fourth quarter um, so it, it it isn't as it isn't as amenable and Mercury entering Aquarius is at 920 now one of the things I want to say also about the early days of our new year is that Mars will enter Scorpio and this is going to be a long Mars is going to spend the year in Scorpio Sag Scorpio and <laughs> retrogrades Sag so we're going to have a lot of time at of looking at Mars and Scorpio. It comes in 9.32 a.m. Sunday the 3rd and the moon is in Scorpio that afternoon and does the conjunction to Mars and Scorpio 2.51 p.m. and then the moon squares Mercury. Watch Sunday the 3rd. Be very aware of all the deep currents and don't get caught in the undertow because Mars and Scorpio Again, Scorpio is a sign that has such high potential that it gets three symbols. The highest one is the dove, which is the greatest peace and the greatest healing. But in, you know, there's also the scorpion level and then that's what you want to be aware of with Mars because the Mars and Scorpio energy isn't as easily seen. Anger in Scorpio is going to be held close and the actions are going to be covert and secretive but one thing we know is that if we get angry in Scorpio energy we don't forget it easily we don't forgive easily so we're going to be looking at that a lot in you know this coming year you know how how capable are we and we get off right at the beginning <laughs> you know with this Sunday particularly giving us the taste you know you want to see what does this feel like this is a this is the great day to start seeing what that's going to be looking like and because mercury is going to retrograde and when I get on the next show I'm going to go into the first few months of, of but I'm just going to go into a short period now um, it's going to retrograde on Tuesday the 5th at 806 a.m. Eastern it's really, you know, not the time, even though we've set our goals and, you know, there are a couple of things happening. Jupiter is going to retrograde this week also. Jupiter retrogrades on, um, it's the 7th. It's the 7th? Well, it's not giving me the time. Oh, 11.40 p.m. That's why it's almost midnight um, on the 7th of, so two retrograde planets starting the first and one of them being Mercury. January isn't the month to go forward. It's the time to review everything. We're going to be reviewing so many things and it seems a little crazy. Well, we set all our goals and you know now we want to do it. Well, you will do it. <laughs> but don't push yourself into fighting a cycle because then you'll probably feel like you failed 
and you haven't failed you just haven't been observing your cycle <laughs> so you haven't used the time well that's all and you can get back on and say okay wait I understand I have to wait for this to complete um, and I'll give you the time when the um, the direct motion of Mercury and Jupiter will take place. So Jupiter is how we expand so it's very important for us to know um, when we want to have projects that to get underway with new things we don't we don't want to launch things with a retrograde Jupiter if we want them to expand alright so this is the thing now Mercury will be retrograde till the 25th of January so that's most of the month alright so just think about waiting and reviewing and just let yourself do that and it will go back into Capricorn so you'll be looking at those plans and thoughts you made again and then it will come back out from Capricorn and into Aquarius again after after it begins going direct Jupiter however won't go direct until the 9th of May Ooh. so you can yeah so it's a slower moving outer planet so you can start some of the motions I mean it's not like you can't do anything it's that like let's say you wanted to launch a business you know you wanted something that's going to start moving outward in a big way that's when you want it you want Jupiter direct for that so it's been direct <laughs> you know so it's been direct for a while so things that you've already put in motion you might also be reviewing and coming back out in May with something a little re redesigned, redeveloped because it's it's still in Virgo. It it is retrograding and going direct in Virgo. Okay. okay. But that's what I, I wanted you to know that about this beginning part of the year because it is so important for us to understand um, when we when we think we're supposed to you know put all of our new ideas about our health and our you know we're gonna start that new fitness program we're gonna do whatever it is and then we find obstacles or just things that aren't working um, don't worry about it it's just the timing it's just the timing it will it will go forward just like a new we're gonna have a new uh, full moon again <laughs> you know uh, and in March we get our eclipses our eclipse cycle start so we're coming into the end of that eclipse cycle that we just had so some of this stuff is wrapping itself up if you haven't already gone through the major issues about the changes in the different places that Aries and Libra were bringing for you then you may be the person who's doing it right at the end of the cycle and then we're coming in when we look at February we're like just four weeks out of the first um, eclipse the solar eclipse so we are again having to sort of tone down just in that month so you know it, it may not be what you know you want to hear but it is what is <laughs> Well, the energies are the energies. They speak for themselves, right? Right. So, um, wow, that was a ton of information, Shelly. Uh, yeah. It's got my little brain on fire, I can tell you. And I, I think for uh, the listeners and viewers out there, they're, they're going to get a lot out of this. And I will go back and listen to this again, just, you know, myself, just because there was just enough information in there that I want to make sure whatever I'm doing, I'm doing in an appropriate time space and understand more of what's really the deal is. And so I thank you for that. Now, we've got you scheduled to come back on, I think, the 19th of next month. Is that correct? Yeah. I think that date's correct. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be updating. I won't be updating my website or anything until after the first of the year. Uh, but I want to let people know is to definitely go to astralessence.com. Uh, and there's also some additional information plus some of the information that Shelly shared with us tonight or today and also her Facebook page um, and there's a place there where you can go and sign up for your newsletter on your website yes yes okay so um, definitely do that so that you can get the full and new moon uh, 
kind of forecast. It will help you if you know, especially if you know your own chart, um, or at least know some of your own chart to be able to assist you in this. Um, and it's really, it's really important that we heard this information just a few days before uh, the day of Christmas, so that people can really get an idea of what they they may expect uh, mm -hmm. happening if they're in a family dynamic. Um, and also, it, I think it was really good for the New Year's Eve and New Year's, uh, the day before New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve as well as the first day of the year, the calendar year. Um, I think it's really great information. Uh, it will help. I think this will help people tremendously. Uh, it does not look like that we had any questions here today, Shelley. So what I'd like for you to do is if you have any final words and uh, before we go, <laughs> Uh, for anyone uh, for the rest of 2015. Oh, a final words, final words for the rest of 2015. Just open your heart and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Perfect. Just, just love is it. That's it. Love yourself and, and love others and just understand things in that light. Absolutely, absolutely. That's beautiful words. I want to remind everyone uh, that I have one more show scheduled for the end of this year. Uh, hopefully this one goes off. Um, we have had to reschedule her several times and that's Marie D. Jones and she will be on next Wednesday the 30th uh, in my regular time slot 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time uh, if all goes well uh, on her end. Uh, we will have her there. Um, and then I do have uh, listings that I will be placing within this week uh, coming up, um, well, next week in between the Christmas and New Year's, where I'll be updating the website with the January guests. Um, I do have four uh, shows already lined up for the beginning of the year. Um, I just wanted people to be able to get over and through the holidays before I muddied up everything with some more newsletters so I will not be sending out another newsletter until after the first of the year um, and I do wish for each and every one of you thank you so much for tuning in today uh, thank you Shelly for your fantastic information I'm hoping I will talk to you before the end of the year but if I do not you have yourself a great holiday season and I want to thank um, my producer Brian uh, for all of his assistance in making uh, these shows come together and of course to each and every one of you out there listening and watching thank you so much for being with us and until we meet again where will your life's journey lead you many blessings everyone and goodbye <laughs> <laughs>